Ben, I don't know if I can keep doing this podcast or you're going to look so cute. Don't I look great? Wow. <laughs> well, not anymore. Now that you said it like that. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you so much for telling me what I was already thinking as I put on this new t-shirt. The best part about making merch for Spritz is that I get to get samples. So like this will never be made. But they like the company just like sends free samples, you know, so you can like feel the material. And sometimes they send like kick ass shit. And so this is just like a cool, nice, soft. Is this like a lime green or it's like a pastel green? I don't mm. know, like lightly oversized because now I'm just like getting fit, you know. So when in the past I like asked for like an XL or a 2XL and it would like absolutely constrict my whole body. Now an XL or a 2XL fits me like a normal T-shirt should fit somebody, you know, a little bit oversized. But yes, thank you for noticing that I am looking great, and you too look great, but you always look great. Thank you, and I, you know, be careful, because I do do this with my friends, so I'm going to be do doing this with you, which is, I will have friends go on health journeys now in their late 20s, 30s, guys who were always in shape, but now, you know, the years have been been, been something, mm. and and they'll, they'll do great, and they'll lose a bunch of weight, and they'll look good, mm -hmm. and they'll keep it off couple months and then the holidays <laughs> and then it creeps back on and all i'm thinking is you're weak you're so weak because i'm 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 the king i'm the king of it 20 <laughs> years knock wood kept it off kept it off it does show like a different level of inner strength i've never really thought about it but you you really it's it's quite impressive because i have gained and lost 60 pounds three times. Wow. Three times. And it's always such a grind to go down. And then it's so easy just, just, to, just to eat your way back to the top. And then, <laughs> and then you do it all again. So I will do my best to keep it off. I think that what we've spoken about this before. I think that the key is to find a way to put on a little bit of muscle like the only way that I know how to lose weight is to be in a complete caloric deficit, which mm. also just takes the limited muscle that I had and turns my arms into like flabby McFlabberstein. So I'm right now just like a, a big pile of mush, but like, I'm like, you wouldn't know that by looking at me now, but I'm mush, I'm mush. Did you mentioned over text that maybe you played in a full court basketball game yesterday and threw up halfway through? I did. Not halfway through. I threw up at the end. I made it through. So I'm in this intramural league. Intramural league. Is there like with my friends involved? from high school. Uh, it does take place in a Jewish day school. It's, uh, it's that's, so that, tracks. It's so on trend for yeah. you. Yeah, that said, um, there is no Judaism particularly involved. Like we don't pray before games. Like none of that. Is um, there a prayer <laughs> involved with like Jewish, like a yeshiva league or like... I don't know the name of the the teams, the Maccabees, the Hebels. Um, the there's no prayers involved, but the Good. same way, like here, uh, we we sing the national anthem, right? There mm. they sing Hatikva. So occasionally, you will hear a Hatikva, the national the, anthem, the national of anthem of Israel, sung at a basketball game. But it would need to be a very important game, you know, like a traditional like high school basketball game. They're not really singing the national anthem maybe well, it, yeah 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 no, no no they they do do the national anthem but i that's my i'm very happy to hear that because when i see different you know high school sports teams and they'll do a br big gentile prayer to their god <laughs> before the game and i what i want to say is you think god gives a f about your middling lacrosse team <laughs> like i i understand you're playing football and you're like please god keep everyone safe because it's a brutal game that i get but like eh, if, do you because if you really felt that way you wouldn't play it at all i know but you got to get out there and live like what are you gonna I, not I, get in a submarine I, and go down to the depths of the atlantic ocean <laughs> We will get there, my friend. We will get there. But oh all God, that I'm so saying awful. is, of, co of course, people should play football. I'm just saying it seems a little bit weird and sacrilegious. I agree with you to pray for safety of something like you. You only pray for safety if you know that something could go wrong. Right. Sure. So like either don't do it or don't pray. But doing it and praying is kind of like, I don't know, like driving. This is a bad analogy, but like 
driving with your gas tank thing open, like, you know, it's a bad idea. Maybe you won't die. Maybe you will. I don't know. I just don't. I, I think the thing I, I was always told about prayer is that it should never be for you. Mm. Right. Like mm -hmm. it, it should usually be for someone else, unless you're in the grips of disease or addiction, like something that's so out of your control that you need some sort of spiritual uh, intervention. But if it's like we really need this to get to the playoffs, I, I'm not quite sure God's, uh, you know, listening. Totally. Totally. Prayer should be for other people. I pray. F I'll pray for you. I'll pray, I'll pray for, for you. you. I'll pray for you. All of a sudden, such a wholesome Christian podcast. <laughs> this podcast has been brought to you by Christian Mingle. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by the Mormon, the Church of Latter-day Saints. Speaking of the Mormons, my mom made sure to tell me that she thought that our episode with Sophia was very inappropriate. <laughs> really? <laughs> Mrs. Sofford did not enjoy it. No, I think that something about... The soaking of it all just was uh, a little bit too risque for her. Benjamin, your so your <laughs> your squirting story was fine, but Mormon soaking I cannot accept. I can't tell if she just hates Mormons or if it had to, like I don't know what it was, but I I think that it was it was a little bit too much for her, just a little bit too much. It wasn't too much for me. I think it was fantastic, and Sophia was fantastic thank you for coming on again but yeah, it was a little bit too much for her but this submarine stuff Ugh. do we want to do we like where do we want to start do well, we want to start from the beginning a very good place to start so fill in the blanks for me but submarine created by this guy or the submarine touring company created by this guy uh had done i think it was 10 missions before Looked like he, it was a, it's a private operation, which people are, uh, people are all up in arms about how it's private and that was like a strange thing. But like when you take a boat, right? Like you like charter a boat from a private company, right? Like the idea of the privatized business of it all doesn't bug me out at all. What really started to weird me out was when you see these videos of him explaining how the submarine operates it's like those, they're using a Logitech controller that I remember using. I don't know if you, like, I don't know if you ever tried to play games on your PC with a remote controller, but that's exactly what it reminded me of. Like where you'd plug it in with a USB into your Dell monitor and you'd try to play like some version of NBA Live 97 on your PC. Like that's exactly what it looked like. And they mentioned that it, functioned solely off of Bluetooth, which like I lose Bluetooth. You you drive more than me. You drive more than me. How often does your Bluetooth disconnect? My AirPods didn't connect this morning. My a Logitech makes my webcam. Okay, not that I'm webcamming, but in the nineties <laughs> it made my <laughs> You think uh, it should be ensuring people's lives at thousands of feet of depth? It just it was just like I'm watching this video. It's talking about how you're going to enter this tin can and they're going to bring you down 9,000 feet, right? Yes. To go and look at a wreckage that nobody needs to go and look at in the first person, just saying. Via remote controller, sitting squished, no windows except for one window. So everybody, as they're in the submarine, are apparently watching the Titanic on a little screen in front of them. Couldn't we watch it on a screen here? It sounds like the perfect thing for the new Apple, like 3D glasses or whatever it is. Yes. I, I, right? Like, do experiences like that make me think I'm 9,000 feet below ground? I don't need to actually go. So they go and they, we just got word that they died. It's the saddest most terrible thing I was thinking yesterday. Like, it's so funny how quickly things go from funny to sad, right? Like the entire internet is just making fun of these people, billionaires paying $250,000 to go in a submarine and they got lost. And all of a sudden reality set in that they died. And now you're thinking through, oh my God, like how horrendous this, like it's a, it's a full blown tragedy. And they're gonna try to say that it was instantaneous, which I'm sure it was, but there was still, there was a, I bet you an awareness, like this isn't, 
this isn't going good. And I just can't tell you how not surprised I am that there was not a single Jew in that sub. Let me finish. (laughs) I mean, I know Jews who won't get, who won't take a middle seat on an airplane. Okay. So yeah, same here. So like, yeah, I was going to say we're Jews that won't take a middle seat. You have no room, (laughs) arm room, leg room. It's terrible. Yeah, and you're like, you get in the submarine, you're like, where's the in-sub entertainment? Like, mm-hmm. what, what, what are we talking about here? And like, <laughs> there's no drink service? I just, I cannot believe, look, this is a problem, right? There's a famous story of, and, and I'll say allegedly, just because I don't know if it's 100% true, but I believe it is, that Mick Jagger and David Bowie, like, hooked up. I don't know to what extent, because eventually they realized that they had conquered and had so many conquests and so many relationships that they were bored, and they looked at each other and was like, how about you? And, like, that's the problem with all that money, that you start mm-hmm. going, you know, land mm-hmm. is so out. Mm-hmm. Let's go to space Let's go down three three billion feet. Go look at you know the remains of Leonardo DiCaprio as Jack. Like, and I'm so glad that I love a stroll around Target because it keeps me safe. Yeah, you're so right. It's the product of having too much money. That said, that guy's 19 year old son that was on board. It's just just freaking terrible. I want to introduce you guys to Element Drink Mix, my absolute favorite electrolyte supplement. Put it in water, shake it up. It's unbelievable. It's a combination of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. I love magnesium. It calms me down. I love potassium because I get a lot of leg cramps. Terrible. And sodium, if you had a couple glasses of wine the night before, wake up feeling a little hungover, Element is amazing for you. Or if you're just looking to stay hydrated throughout the day, I drink as much water as I possibly can, but you can't ever stay truly as hydrated as you can by using Element as well. With none of the junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, nothing. Really clean, really good for you, and it's keto season, literally. Not just the lifestyle, it's truly keto, low carb, paleo, perfect for your diet, and Element is used by everyone from NBA players, NFL players, NHL players, Navy SEALs, Navy SEALs use this stuff, Olympic athletes to me, moms, dads, you know, your everyday folk. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serve packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinklmnt.com slash good guys. This deal is only available through my link. You must go to D R I N K L M N T dot com slash good guys. Try it totally risk free. If you don't like it, share it with a salty friend and they will give you your money back. No questions asked. You have absolutely nothing to lose. We're incredibly excited to introduce you to one of our newest sponsors, Via Hemp Co. Vi is making a ton of different CBD and THC products that ship nationwide in discreet packaging right to your door. Because their THC is extracted from organic hemp, they're able to sell the same cannabis experience you know and love in all 50 states, no medical card required. One of my favorite products from them is this low-dose gummy. Uh, It has two milligrams of THC to such a great night's sleep, and it helps with like anxiety. So if you ever like to smoke before bed, this is honestly a great alternative to that. But if you like something more intense, they have products ranging from two milligrams to 50 milligrams a variety of CBD products and THC products. So if you're looking to microdose on a daily basis or whenever you're feeling anxious, you can do that, or you can use one of their uh, more higher dose products, however you see fit, munchy season. If you're 21 plus and want to try their products, go to viahemp.com and use code goodguys for 15% off, plus they'll add a free pack of their award-winning THC gummies to your order. Go to the link in the description or type in viahemp.com and use code GOODGUYS for 15% off plus free gummies. V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P dot com. Viahemp.com and use code GOODGUYS for 15% off, plus they'll add a free pack of their award-winning THC gummies to your order. 
and the guy, the the one who owned the company, seemed so cavalier. And there was that sixty minutes, I think, or like CBS Sunday Morning of two years ago. They attempted to do this for a news outlet, and they got like twenty feet down. Something went awry, and they had to come back up. Like their track record was not good, and it's so it's so sad. But with a bad track record. And that video just out there of him explaining it with his remote controller, how do you get multiple billionaires to give you a quarter of a million dollars for a four hour deep, like deep submarine ride? I just, I just, I I don't understand it. Like something's amiss and it almost seems like we're being punked. But billionaires be cray cray because (laughs) (laughs) it's true. You're right. Too much money, too much money. Well, Rest in peace to those sad souls. So the guy who owned the company, I didn't see this 60 Minutes. Has he has he commented on what's going on recently? He can't. He was in the sub. Oh, he was in it. Yeah. Oh, well, it is what it is. <laughs> so we're still waiting for a comment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, know, you know that the company was not ready to do that dive if the owner of the company was on the dive. That means that they do that so infrequently. You know, he doesn't want to go down there all the time if it was so routine. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't realize that he was on it. Yeah, you probably don't drink a lot of spritz anymore. You've had a lot. You're the owner. I, I drink, I definitely drink less, certainly. Like I'll, sure. have, I'll have a couple. I'm not pounding them like my first time. It's the same thing just like everything else. Eventually, you certainly have other people helping you. Right. And so, yeah, this this must have been his an early rodeo. And Jeez uh, Louise. Well, R.I.P. It's so awful. And we from the Good Guys podcast, we send our sincere condolences because it's very sad. We do. We but do. I think it's I think it is worth mentioning because there was a story in the news and get ready for this one that the son of the billionaire, the son <laughs> of Hamish Harding, a guy named Brian Saz, Posted on Twitter, please keep my family in your prayers, which was lovely. This was two days ago. And then about an hour, about 30 minutes later, his attention shifted to streamer and on, an OnlyFans model, Brea, who posted a pic of herself in a bikini with the caption, can I sit on you? <laughs> to, to which Brian reposted and commented, yes, please. <laughs> Billionaires don't got no feelings, dog. You can't amass that kind of wealth if you're worried about others. It's his stepdad. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, he barely even knows him. He's pro- honestly, he's probably thrilled. Now he gets all that money, right? He gets the OnlyFans. He gets somebody to sit on his face. He gets all that money. He probably, <laughs> maybe he disconnected the Bluetooth. Oh. <gasps> Maybe he's the one behind the whole thing. Do you think when he got word that they were gone, he said, that's what you get for f-ing my mom? Yeah, exactly. That's so I do. bad. I do. Marshall, no, make but... a note. We're cutting that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I saw that. And that is truly nuts. Truly so nuts. I, I, I think inquiring minds are interested, but um, I believe I saw you and your lovely wife might have purchased a new vehicle. We leased, yes. Mm. I don't, I don't, I don't really like. Actually, before I go into it, because you're such a car man, would you? Do you buy your cars? I don't. Well, I I bought it last year at the end of a lease because mm. the prices for cars were so insane. But usually, no, I lease. I just never understood the idea of buying a car because then you have to sell it. All of a sudden, you're a car salesman, right? Like I didn't. I don't want a job. I want a car. It's a whole Megillah, except, and I must shout out CarMax, because I recently had a lovely experience with them selling my mother's car, who at almost 80, shout out Barb, has mm. made really the 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 most, I would say, like, respectable decision ever, which is, I think I'll Uber from now on. I might not be the best person on the road. And I was like, Ma, shout out you. Respect. And also, very glad to be saving on my insurance payments. <laughs> All, so of a sudden the, all of a sudden, the Uber payments, though, are through the roof because, my God, Uber needs to settle down. So you leased your new car. Leased my new car. 
We got a Range Rover Sport, which we're pretty excited about. Claudia wow. wanted something, you know, like a little, a little bougie, high end. Um, That's a li- nice. A little, yeah, it's nice. It's it's roomy. Shout out Land Rover Jaguar of Brooklyn. Literally the nicest people. Unbelievable. Josh, you ever moved back to the city? We're taking the Land Rover Jaguar. You can pick out only between a Land Rover and a Jaguar. That's why it's called Land Rover Jaguar. I also recently found out that those companies merged. Mm. So now now they are one. Um, but we got a nice, cozy Range Rover Sport. You can catch me going 130 on the highway. I'm so nervous, honestly. This is the first time that either of us have had our own cars and our own insurance plans. And so whenever I got a speeding ticket, like, God bless my father, his plan went up, right? Sure. Terrible. But, like, I didn't have to feel the brunt of that the way that I probably should have. And I'm a fast, I'm a pretty fast driver. I made it back home from Boston. Claudia and I did a meet and greet at Market Basket, which is a liquor store earlier in the week. It's uh, 200, 210 miles. I got home in two hours and 50 minutes. Wow. Flew. That's speeding. Flew. Um, so I'm like a little nervous because this is a fast car, right? But but I'm excited. Uh, and this weekend we're going to the Hamptons. We're taking our Range Rover to the Hamptons. Jeez Louise. And, uh, What's it the like? Good, the good news is that it will rain and thunderstorm the entire weekend. So, Well, yeah, we I got hate to car. break it to you, but... LA is sunny days, 10 day forecast is sunny, sunny, sunny in the eighties, gorgeous. So it took us a minute, but we're back to ourselves. Picks or it didn't happen. (laughs) Picks Um, or it didn't happen. No, I know what you mean about buying. I'm glad to hear that you buying a $90,000 vehicle was a nice experience because it should be. Leasing. I can't tell you how many times I remember once, and this is a, bougie story but so be it my wife was interested in the lower end affordably priced very very small entry level porsche suv fine i said it okay (laughs) a porsche mccann they call it and we go into the we we go into the dealership we're just like tooling around and no one's helping so i go sick so then a guy walks up and he's like, how can I help you? And I was like, my wife's interested in this car, but me being me, right? At this time, I was like, she's not getting a Porsche. I'm like, listen, I'm really about the deal. And my buddy always says this. He's like, I don't need to test drive it because these are all tactics. Granted, you should know how a car drives, but if you've driven, if you've had a Kia for 10 years and you're getting another Kia, it drives like a Kia. Trust mm-hmm. me. Like, mm-hmm. So... My buddy has taught me because he he has an auto body shop. He's like, you trying the car, them keeping you there for five hours. You're like, where did my day go? Where's mm-hmm. the guy? Why do I keep getting free waters? This is all <laughs> tactics to burn your day. So when it's all said and done and they go, listen, we actually have to charge you an extra hundred bucks a month. You just go, oh, just do it. I don't want to waste the day. I don't want this whole day to be a waste. So he finally shows his face. He goes, you're gonna wanna drive this car. This is a Porsche. I go, no, I'm not. I said, I'm gonna need my lease payment to be 600 bucks a month or we're we're out of here. He goes, come look at the car. I'm like, this guy's not getting it. So we go look at the car and he goes, listen, I don't need to sell you this car. I'm like, really? You're wearing Cole Haan loafers. My suspicion is you do need a sale. But okay, we'll live in your dream world, sir. He goes, a Porsche buyer is a certain type of buyer. I'm like, that I can believe. He goes, I said, listen, I really want to know that I'm in the ballpark. Because if you're going to come here and tell me it's going to be $1,000 a month, like, that's crazy. But if you're like, eh, it's 700 and I can work with you, we'll, we'll talk about it. I'm on iCarly. I'm doing well. That I can swing. So I say to the guy, listen, I need this to be the the ballpark otherwise i don't want to waste your time and he goes check out the leather i said sir my wife's a vegan you're really (laughs) messing up here (laughs) like she's not going to be interested in the cow leather in this porsche 45 minutes later he like literally refused to even talk money because he like wanted me to get a hard on for this car and i was like brother we're gone and he missed the sale jokes on him enjoy your cole hans 
Mr. Sale, I have so many questions after that story. First of all, if you are a vegan, I've never thought about this. Leather seats? Depends on the type of vegan. You know, some vegans won't even eat honey. Interesting. So that doesn't it, make, but why, why wouldn't they eat honey? Because it's an animal byproduct. Ah, aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. okay. They don't want the bees to be enslaved for their sweet tooth. Would vegans get in a taxi cab with leather seats? Again, it depends on the vegan. My wife is the coolest vegan I've ever met. Shout out vegans. I, I like all of you, but some of you can be annoying, much like shout out Marshall. Um, it, some can be annoying, just like all meat eaters can be annoying. Um, she will avoid leather when possible. She will drive an electric car when possible. And she's she will avoid honey when possible. Like honey is like the only thing that if it's in something and she has no control, she'll like accept it, but ideally it wouldn't have it. So if she can be a, a black belt vegan, she will be, but if she has to make some compromises to be more tolerable, she's down to clown. Interesting. And Porsche or Porsche? That's a tough one. Cause I hear it both ways and I don't know the correct way to say it. What do you think? I think the correct way to say it is Porsche but I'll mm. never say it. Me either. It, uh, that's like it, an exchange student who comes back from like six months abroad and goes guacamole. Like I can't yeah. do it. <laughs> or like can't. Uh, uh, just take the lift. And I'm like, babe, I, I don't care that you did six months in London. Call it an elevator. Is that what they say? The lift. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> it doesn't even make any sense. I guess what does elevator mean? Nothing. Oh, elevate. Elevate? Yeah, elevate. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. What else is going on, cutie? I actually have a pretty great What Are You Nuts this week. I can't wait. Um, so uh, every morning I go and get my coffee from this bougie coffee shop called Bibluque mm. uh, on the Upper East Side. I'm really starting to paint a very douchey picture here, which is the antithesis of me with my new Range Rover Sport, the Hamptons and my my coffee from Bibluque. That said, Bibluque, cheaper than Starbucks. I just want to say that America's coffee is very expensive. It's very expensive. Yes. And sometimes you go to like the nice, bougie, or even mom and pop shop, it's significantly less expensive. Just saying. I'm in line, and the woman in front of me orders a hot cup of coffee. The person taking her order turns to her and says, uh, sure, do you want anything in that? She says, I'll take some sugar and some whole milk. She says, okay, miss, what's your name? And she says, oh dear, whips her hair back. The name's Chanel, like my bag, and shows her her bag. And all I gotta say is, what are you nuts? Does that happen to her? That must happen to her every day of her life, right? I didn't just catch her on like a random moment where she decided to say that it was Chanel like her bag. So this woman must just everywhere she goes, reference the fact that her name is Chanel, like her bag, or like her shoes, or like her belt. And all I got to say is, what are you nuts? Yeah, that is total what are you nuts. You're right. She's had that canned, loaded, and ready to go for her whole life. And her whole life. Like, my only question is, what if her name was Coach? True. Right? I, yes, I highly doubt. Well, if her name was Coach, she'd be super cool. Yeah, no, that's a more accessible bag. No, I'm saying she wouldn't mention the bag because the bag is, you say accessible, I say poor. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is really turning off most of our... <laughs> Between Range Rovers, Porsches, Range Land Rovers, Sports. <laughs> Range Rovers, Sport, We're Hamptons, scumbags, Ben. We are Bibluke. the problem. Cayennes. The Jewish elite. We should change the name of this podcast to the Jewish elite. We should. We should. We should. Absolutely. Do that, you have a what are you nuts moment? I do. I do have a what are you nuts moment. And it's, it's this trend. And my wife was telling me, I find, and I don't mean to gender it, but here I go. I find that this whole advent of the ick, it's giving me ick is more female generated, right? And it, it tends to be, and the women in my life who do say the ick, it can be directed towards their female friends and male friends, but primarily it tends to be directed at boyfriends, dates, 
husband's partners. Now, my wife was turning me on to this trend on TikTok, which was like, saw this about my husband and it gave me the ick, some version of this. And it was like Mm -hmm. this woman's poor husband trying to ride a horse. And (laughs) fair enough, it gave me the ick. It was ridiculous. But what I told my wife, I think in a pretty cold-blooded moment was, hey, do you think that you girls don't completely and utterly turn us off? And so my Woody and Nuts is, do you think you don't give us the ick? I'm getting icks all day, babe, but I'm the man of steel. I'm I'm letting it bounce right off. I don't stick with the ick, but it's happening. Put that on a teacher. Don't stick with the ick. But I'm with you. The ick is always about a guy. It's always but about I think a that, guy. But I think that that's because girls are going to talk about guys. Guys aren't going to come on and talk about their icks, right? That's right. Like, I think that it's more just like who's... Sh- who coined the term ick, right? And who they're going to complain about. So honestly, free pass. But rest assured, I mean, you, you, no one is confused about your idolatry and love of your wonderful wife. And same here. We are the luckiest men there are. And yet, Number, I yes. would imagine on a weekly basis, you're getting the ick from Claudia as I am getting the ick from my dear Paige, no? There's definitely, but it's funny now that you bring it up this way, I would never describe it as ick because I actually don't like that word. I do. I don't either. I think that it's like a weird word that like is meaner than it needs to be. Like I've, I don't like, I'll be annoyed, right? Or I'll get like, the, the word turn off is like, is like the right word. Like I'll mm. get like, I'll get like, like turned off or like, like maybe she'll say something rarely, of course, <laughs> where I'm like, oh, that was fucked up. Um, but I wouldn't describe it as the ick. I would just say, like, annoying is a far better word. Right. Right? Will you give me your opinion on or your insight into the conflict resolution that happens between you and your wife? Because recently, last week on Monday, my wife and I had a bit of a tiff. Mm. Now, she did something that I, that she does to me sometimes that I didn't like, that I don't like. And I think I was well within my uh, sort of right to feel like, stop doing that. I don't like that. Now, where I messed up was I had an overreaction and mm. our son was there. And I just kind of was like, why, why do you say, why do you do that? Like, stop it. And I could just see her look over like our son's there. He's watching trick shots on YouTube. He, he's toned out. But I, it wasn't like some you know gigantic like <laughs> like you better keep your mouth shut like what's it mean that <laughs> but I, I just like viscerally you know and sometimes i'm like stop it why do you say that and i just saw her go her lip curled and she got quiet and i got the message and i didn't say another thing and my wife left the conversation figuratively and literally like my wife was gone and she didn't reappear for four days. Now, when I say that, her body was there. We shared a bed, but she Irish Catholic to me so hard. I was like, and now thank God when I was, you know, a young fiery 20 something Jew, you know, all therapized, I was like, we need to have this out now. I won't stand for this energy in my apartment that's 900 square feet. Like I, I would, I would have forced a conflict that would have just been like so hard on both of us. And you just brought something up that I thought was unique to my relationship that I think we need to discuss because maybe this is just a male female thing. Do wi- women love to say that it's about the reaction, not what they did to you to create that reaction in you Preach. that is a cl- that is a classic thing like you could do something that annoyed me to no end but if i snap back at it what i did was worse than what made me snap yes that's it that's right and i just have to say that's nuts it's nuts <laughs> and now that i know that it's a thing women stop it just stop it it's enough because the one thing that I absolutely hate that Claudia does, that she will do until the end of time, and that's fine. She knows I hate it, she does it, it's fine, is pick my blackheads. She will take 
her fingernail sharp as hell and digging into my nose like she's going on a submarine down to the Titanic. Dig in and in and Too pop, soon. Out, pop out these blackheads. And she gets like some kind of like, she thinks she's Dr. Pipple Popper. Mm-hmm. Like she wants, she bought a kit. She has a kit that has like a, like a metal tool that could like scrape. I hate it. Shout out and, Amazon. I know and, that's where she got it. And sometimes it'll hurt. And I'll say, stop. And then exactly as you pointed out, that's it. I fucked up. I had too strong of a reaction. That said, Josh, we're being gaslit. Well, the only, you couldn't be more right, Benjamin. And I'm so, I feel really lucky to have a podcast with you. And I feel lucky to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I know for her, it was like, don't ever, I didn't even lose my cool, but like, don't snap back in front of our kid ever, which is like, we're, um, we're so good at that. And we, we have friends who like argue in front of their kids and you can tell like their kids are so damn smart. They pick up that energy right away. And if nothing else, they just transmit it back in some version of that. Sure. So I, I, I knew that's where I messed up, but I agree with you totally. I was like, this doesn't seem, I don't know why I'm in the chokey shout out Matilda for mm. this transgression. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. It's a women thing. That said, I don't know. I don't you got know. nothing. You want to know why? Because you can't. You can't pack this up neat. I, can't. I saw you trying to pack it up neat. I can't. <laughs> I tried to like come up with like some higher uh, saying or learning that we could bestow upon our other male listeners. But the <laughs> truth is, you're always going to be wrong. No matter what happens, they say happy wife, happy life. And it's true. It's true. I I couldn't agree more. I think you and I are two of the luckiest men on earth. And I'm not just saying this to now try to pack it up <laughs> neat for myself. But, <laughs> but I will see men out in the wild and they're unmarried or they're divorced two or three times. And they they seem feral. Like Mm. I realize marriage isn't for everyone and long-term relationships aren't for everyone, but they're for most. And I, dudes who are not in a, some kind of relationship and you know, they could be in a same sex relationship, whatever it is. I just think having a partner holds you to a certain level of accountability. And if you've been out there on your own for too long, it's, you start getting some funny habits. Absolutely. Yep. Freaks. Bunch of freaks. And you spend a lot of money on random shit that you don't need. Speaking of random shit that I don't need, I told you that I started taking lines, man, right? We spoke about that a couple of weeks ago. Yes, you you have dipped your toe into nootropics and functional mushrooms. I am taking lines, man, every day. And now let me tell you what I'm feeling. I used to take magnesium before I went to bed because magnesium would calm me down. I found that lowered my central nervous system. I wasn't like overthinking too much lion's mane has had a similar effect where Hmm. it's calmed me down it's calmed me down that said it might be making me a little bit sleepy interesting do you find your cognition is better you're thinking faster at a more premium level you know maybe i think i'm also a little bit under the weather i don't know if you can hear it my left ear is rather clogged my mouth is very dry i'm having incredible amount of acid reflux so Maybe it's just that I'm not feeling 100% and I'm blaming the lion's mane when in reality, maybe the lion's mane is making me be able to function while I'm sick when normally I wouldn't be functioning at all. So maybe the mushrooms are doing really well, but I am on it. I am enjoying it. I am, I'm calm. I feel good. I think, yeah, maybe the cognition is, is good. Maybe it's, it's interesting. I haven't, I haven't. I've been on it for now two, two-ish two weeks. And I felt like the first week, it was amazing. But I kept reading that it's not possible for you to feel it within the first week. So maybe it was just placebo? No, I think you can feel it immediately. I've been on and off cognitive mushrooms, chaga, lion's mane, cordyceps for the last five years. I'm a big fan, big proponent. And shout out Magnesium and a proud sponsor of Good Guys. And this is a very natural uh, inadvertent read. I'd be drinking that element water, the element packs, which mm-hmm. uh, are electrolyte packs that have sodium, potassium, magnesium. Gorgeous. I get less cramps. I feel 
very hydrated, and it's delicious. Delicious. I've been trying to drink more tea. Are you a tea drinker? I'm not a tea drinker. I'm not. Let me tell you, first of all, I love peppermint tea. I'll drink a cup of peppermint tea it's as much as nausea. possible before bed. Is it interesting? I like to go with ginger ale, even though that's just 100% sugar. But peppermint tea, I love it. Now I'm into, or I want to be into, buying like cool, fancy, expensive mugs and cool teapots. So I found this one teapot. I'm going to send it to you. And maybe I'll post it on my Instagram story. It's this elephant where its trunk is what... Uh, the tea ends up steeping out of, it's not a tea bag, it's the raw tea. And you pour it in, into the steeper and it comes out the elephant's trunk. And I don't know, I just, I just felt like sharing that with you, that I'm, I'm into teas and, and looking to buy some tea paraphernalia. I, <laughs> I love that you're into tea. And I think that <laughs> on that note, it's worth mentioning, I don't know if you see this, but did you see that Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg are thinking about having a MMA UFC fight? No. Really? Elon, Mu Elon Musk tweeted something to the extent someone had mentioned that Mark Zuckerberg and him were in some sort of fight. And someone was like, well, look out because Mark trains jujitsu, to which Elon said, I'm down for a cage match. And then Mark responded on his social media platform, Instagram, Give me a location, which might be the dopest shit any Harvard grad has ever said. And Dana White wants to sponsor it. I'm sure the Pauls will be there. How do we get in on this, Ben? You want to fight each other? Undercard? Uh, I mean, yeah, but we'll, we'll need to do it. Like, we'll need to have some kind of treaty beforehand. Like, otherwise, I think you will kick my ass. I don't think so, but I also think, what if Logan and Jake said, we want to have a tag team boxing match between you and Ben? First, would you go on TV with your shirt off? I'll answer yes. that for myself. I would not. I would. <laughs> I would be the only person to box in a wetsuit. But <laughs> how do you think it would go for us with the Pauls? Terribly? Terribly. Would we set back Jews a hundred years? Yes, Terribly. It would go terribly. But back to Zuckerberg. That the Zuckerberg Elon Musk of it all is so interesting to me because the only reason people do that typically is for money. They have all the money in the world. This is oddly reminiscent of the submarine. It is. It is. Billionaires with too much money and time on their hands that they decide to cage match. Like, what are you, nuts? But I love it. I absolutely love it. Who are you rooting for in that cage match? God, that's hard. It's not hard I, for me. Musk. You are going Musk? You're going for yeah, Musk? Yeah, yeah. Come on. I have to, especially if Zuckerberg is out here touting the fact that he's judicu, whatever the hell, ju ju judip shit. Like, I want to see him get his... <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him get his face pummeled. I have a hard time because, like, when I'm a big combat sports fan, and if I don't know the fighters well, then I will just root for the guy from the U.S. because, mm. I don't know, some level of nationalism. So a part of me wants to go Team Jew with Zuckerberg. I just think it would really... I mean, if he put Elon Musk in a rear naked choke, I think you would see attendance at, at synagogues go way up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. But no, I, I got to be Team Musk on this one. Wow. So cool. I love that. I hope that happens. It's obviously not going to happen. But it would be really cool if it did. Well, I think on really that cool note, we've had an incredible podcast. We have. We I'm have. so proud of us. And I love your callback ending the pod with where we started, which is Billionaires Be Cray Cray. And that's the name of the episode. Cray -cray. And that's the name of the episode. Rate, review, subscribe if you enjoyed this podcast. If you're watching it on YouTube, you'll notice that I have a new little uh, Good Guys microphone stand, and that's not all that you're going to see. You know, we got some some really great, fun, maybe branding moments, maybe some merch, some crazy stuff coming. I uh, just want to do a light tease there, but rate, review, and subscribe. Give it five stars. Even if you didn't like the podcast, give it five stars. Recommend it to a friend, and uh, we'll see you next week.